happy to finally release version 3.0 of the Infinity Sun Jar. Remember in version 2.0, it had a single solar cell, a small circuit board to it, and one super cap. Version 3.0 uses two solar cells, two super caps, and puts out four times the light. Now I've been working on this all winter. Version 2.0 still works great. The only drawback to it is the solar charging is extremely inefficient since it basically just has the solar cell coupled directly to the supercapacitor with a diode to keep power from flowing back through it. While it works, it's very hard for it to get the full charge since the solar cell is never working at its maximum power point. Version 3.0, on the other hand, not only have I doubled the solar capacity to two solar cells and two uh, super caps, but if I cover over the LED, I am now using the ZSPM4523 maximum power point super capacitor charger. What this chip does is it's just like an MPPT charger for any solar system, just a lot smaller. It takes the extra voltage from the solar cells, converts it into current or amps, and allows it to charge it up to four times faster than this setup does. So with this chip, I was able to easily increase the size of the super caps, get them charged all the way up, and also we're using the same boost circuit. That has not changed at all between 2 and 3.0, but I've changed the resistor that current limits the LED. Version 2.0 has a 200 ohm resistor on it. Version 3.0 has a 30 ohm resistor on it. This gives out almost four times as much light. Plus, as an added piece, I've put a mini USB port on here for cloudy days, days where it's partly cloudy, the sun comes out, it goes out, and you need to top it off a little bit because you want it to really run for 16 hours at a shot. This can also charge through USB. Now mind you, I have to make sure that everyone realizes this when I start selling them. Do not plug the USB into any computer. It has to go into a wall outlet. This dumps the power directly into the MPPT chip and it could conceivably pull more than a half an amp which is what is designed through a USB port on a computer and blow out the USB port on a computer. You need to use a standalone wall outlet which I'll show you in a minute. So what I have set up here is just a regular three prong connector an extension cord going through a AC to USB adapter the USB charger doctor so we can see how much power it's pulling and a standard mini USB cable. Now I chose mini USB over micro USB because mini USB seems to be a lot stronger and since everything on this board with the exception of the supercapacitors and the LED are surface mount I didn't want someone getting it and then three months later accidentally ripping the port off of the board. So let's plug it in the correct way. You'll notice the LED immediately goes out because it thinks it's got power. So it shuts that off and you can see here we're pulling about 0 0.39, 0 0.36 and it'll bounce around as it goes through its charge cycle. Right now these supercapacitors only charged maybe 1.2, 1.3 volts. If this is completely dead you can charge it by USB and it takes about 45 minutes to bring it up to full charge. Now when it's at full charge at 2.6 volts, even if it's still plugged in or with it in the sun with the solar running as well, the boost circuit will be deactivated because it sees power. But at the same time, this LED will start lighting very dimly at 2.6 volts. It's also a good indication of when this thing is fully charged. Now while I have it plugged in the USB and still charging right now and the LED's out, I can show you how I laid out this board. Basically I cut the board in half electrically. This side's the boost, this side is charging. As you can see there's still plenty of room for charging if I needed more components. Over here we're still using the NCP1402 boost chip 
and its associated pieces, including its small little inductor right here. On this side, you have the ZSPM4523 solar supercapacitor charging chip with its bigger inductor supporting capacitors and a current sense resistor so it can tell how much it's charging. Also, you have the three pins right down here for SCL, SDA, and ground if you want to reprogram the chip. The chip has two options in it. What voltage you want to terminate charging the super caps at and also what output and current up to one and a half amps that you want to charge the super capacitors at. Now since this board is not full size, if I leave the chip set for one and a half amps, it will overheat and, and start thermal cycling. So I have it turned down to one amp for that reason alone and also so I don't overload any type of um, USB ports. This way it only pulls about a half an amp or maybe 0.6 amps from a USB wall outlet. That's also why you cannot plug this into a computer. Now this isn't perfectly scientific, but I'm going to show you the difference in intensity. Both of these units are charged up to 2.6 volts, the version 2.0 and the version 3.0. What I have is my meter currently set in lux mode or light mode, and I just got a toilet paper roll tied onto the light sensor. So I'm going to shoot each light just flush with it down into it and read the reading, and you can see the difference how the version 3.0 is also a lot brighter than 2.0. Since the camera really compensates for the light, you can't tell. So this is a little more proof. So first let's do the 2.0. And we're just going to move it around until we get the highest reading here. And I face it directly to it. Say 415. 2.0, 415. Now 3.0. You can already see the big difference, and I haven't even finished aiming it yet. Let's see what I can get here. 15, 16. Come on, 17. Let's go, let's just go 1700. So that is a big difference that you can't see on camera, but you can see on meter. Now you can see in a fully charged state, these supercapacitors are almost charged. They're like 2.5 or 2.6. I have the chip set for 2.68 volts. There is a slight glow from them. But the second I unplug the USB, the boot circuit starts kicking on and it's extremely bright. So when it's plugged in and it's almost full, it's an indication that these supercapacitors are fully charged or really close to it. Now when I sold version 2.0, it came like this. It's a working electronics, but it's unfinished. It's not in a case or anything. I did show in one of my videos the option of maybe casting clear resin, which works good. It's a little expensive and it's kind of a pain in the butt to work with. So for version 3.0, I did the option of using one of these Plano 3400 series waterproof stowaway dry lock o-ring seal boxes. The reason why these are so good, once you take the label off of it, you can easily encase the whole unit in there with plenty of room to spare, protects electronics from any type of moisture, so you can leave it outside. Basically just three pieces, they pop off open up, this actually has an o-ring seal to lock out any moisture or weather. Inside, I have the two solar cells glued to the bottom, then the unit itself actually put inside here, shining outwards with the mini USB port up in case I still need to AC charge it. It was a really cloudy day, it's the middle of winter, whatever. So, this works great, it's just three nice Secure clips. You can put this. You can put this outside. Just make sure the solar cells are facing towards the sun. Let it charge all day. If a rainstorm comes by, you don't have to worry about the electronics going bad in here. They're protected. Then at nighttime, you just bring it in, and it lights up a room perfectly fine. If you decide to get this case for the version 3.0, the only modification I actually had to do to the case, 
The top has three ribs running on down here so that it would clear the two super caps. I basically just had to whittle away the two outer ones and this way it will close perfectly fine. With those two in the way, it will never close correctly. You'll never get a seal. And I don't even think these things actually latched. So that's the only modification you got to do to the case. Everything else is in here right now with hot glue. Uh, probably to make it a little more permanent, I would do clear epoxy or something just around the edges like I did before. But once this is closed, the electronics are protected. This is good for 20 plus years with no problems whatsoever. So that is version 3.0. It's definitely got a much more robust charging circuit onto it and double the capacity, almost quadruple the lighting. The only problem I'm gonna have right now is I can't even make more for myself. The boost chip, the NCP1402, is on basically international back order. It doesn't matter who I go to, no one has it in stock. It could be Mouser, it could be DigiKey, it could be Newark, no one in the United States has it and I'm not gonna bother with the overseas too much, so it's not even worth it. So they should all be back in stock by late June, early July, at which point I can actually start building these for myself, because I want a few of them for myself, and for anyone else who wants it off of Tindy. If you have any questions or comments, by all means, leave them down below, and please share the video to anyone you know would like it.